Greetings, everyone. Today, I decided to begin uh, reviewing the Mega Man comic series from Archie. Because, well, I've done a number of uh, Let's Reviews for the Sonic comics, and I figure with the uh, crossover between these two characters uh, coming soon, I might as well get a few reviews in on Mega Man, just to be fair. And, yeah, with that, let's uh, get started with no issue number one. This issue begins with Mega Man storming Dr. Wily's castle. Already? Well, that was fast. Well, anyway, after he dodges those uh, big eyes, and I don't blame him, those things take off a lot of health, he gets to the entrance to Wily's castle, and uh, there is no door. So, Mega Man decided to make himself a door and uh, use Super Arm to rip the wall off. And that's a little nod to the section in Wily's uh, castle where we have to use Super Arm in the game. And I give him props for uh, using that reference. Once Mega Man enters the castle, the door slams shut behind him, and in comes the Yellow Devil. Oh, jeez. And then, of course, at that point, it cuts back to a few days ago. Mega Man, or should I say Rock at this point, and his sister Roll help prepare Dr. Light uh, for his presentation in just a few moments. And, of course, coming up to them is Dr. Wily, and, of course, I like the little beat of um, Rock offering to shine Dr. Wily's shoes because, well, Rock's a helper robot. He loves helping people. And then, of course, Dr. Wily wants to talk to Dr. Light because, uh, well, Dr. Wily is not going to be on stage with him. And, of course, Dr. Wily protests because uh, he helped build the Robot Masters and such. But then, of course, Dr. Light uh, retorts saying that... Um, Dr. Wily has participated in some unethical robotic experiments, and of course, Light wants a Light Labs to be a family-friendly organization. And then, of course, um, good old Wily says, "Well, Light makes right." Or nice little nod to the whole uh, English thing the Japanese had. So anyway. Dr. Light extends his hand, saying that there will be other opportunities, and let history re remember as them being the two people who uh, changed the future. And then, of course, Wily takes uh, Light's hand and uh, wishes him good luck. Rock helps uh, Dr. Light with the final preparations, and, and I just like Wily here in the shadows. I mean, that grim, it, it, it screams, I'm evil. But then, of course, Light is uh, too nervous to notice, and Rock and Roll um, don't understand the complexities of human emotion, unfortunately. Dr. Light begins his presentation, and uh, by the way, nice 8-bit uh, portrait of yourself. And then, of course, in the audience, there are a bunch of reporters, and four of them uh, really stand out. Three of them are from the racing game Mega Man Battle and Chase, and their names are Chess, Plum, and Ripot in that exact order. The fourth is Nage from Mega Man Zero Four, and it's strange to see her 200 years before she was born. Either she has access to a time machine to witness this historic event, or the Nage in the comics is actually an ancestor and she modeled herself after the ancestor, so yeah. Of course, Dr. Light now reveals his uh, creations, the Robot Masters. He describes uh, each one of them and what their functions are and so on and so forth. And I like how this page arranges them kind of like the stage select screen of uh, Mega Man 1. Dr. Light describes these Robot Masters as having advanced AI capabilities, which means they can take control of um, lesser known robots to uh, get the job done. Ripbot uh, asks the question if uh, these Robot Masters will be used in warfare. And of course, uh, Dr. Light pretty much says no. And then Dr. Wily leaves. That night, the children were helping Dr. Light get ready for bed, and they were troubled by that one reporter's question. And of course, Dr. Light explained that he had to make a weapons of war for money in order to start Light Labs. 
but then when he built the children, he discovered better possibilities for the uh, world of robotics. As he is saying that, uh, Dr. Wily sneaks into Light Labs and reprograms the Robot Masters to serve him. Great security, Dr. Light. But to be fair, Dr. Wily was his partner, so he would have easy access to the lab whenever he wants. The next morning, Roll wakes up Dr. Light, and uh, both of them see that the Robot Masters are gone, and Rock uh, tells them to turn on the TV, and uh, oh boy. Channel 8 News. We continue our coverage of a sudden robot attack in downtown. <laughs> As you can see, the robots continue to cause massive damage after both the police and army. <laughs> Dr. Wily controls the airwaves now, and soon the world! My robot masters are unstoppable! I demand complete and immediate surrender from the world's leaders, and to be recognized as the greatest genius in the history of mankind! <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> Roll assures Dr. Light that everyone knows it's Dr. Wily behind this and that they can stop him. But then, of course, Dr. Light says that um, we built the Robot Masters too well. No one can stop them. Rock decided to say, I'll fight them. I will stop them. And then, of course, Rock explains that he wants to help people and he doesn't really want to fight. But if it comes down to it, he will. Dr. Light agrees it has to be done, and then says that he has to uh, modify Rock into a more combat-capable robot. It's a little reminder of the uh, cutscene in Mega Man 4, you know, Mega Man's origin scene, three sequels later. The comics go into greater detail on the transformation, including uh, improving Rock's solar reactor, creating his blue armor, uh, testing out his uh, Mega Buster, and the charge shot. And why is the charge shot in now? I mean, it was introduced in Mega Man 4, but I digress. And of course, the uh, copy chip that will allow Mega Man to copy abilities. Dr. Light says he didn't want this for Mega Man, but he is proud of him. Dr. Light named Rock Rock for his love of music. It will not suit uh, Rock in his uh, new situation. Based on his weapon, the Mega Buster, Rock decides to call himself Mega Man. Overall, this is a great start to a great series. I love the little uh, nods to the Mega Man community, such as the light right thing and the battle and chase group. The writer of uh, this comic series is also the current writer of the Sonic comic series, Ian Flint, so we're going to expect some uh, more nods to the games and such in the future, I bet. The pencils are done by Spaz, and he has been known to uh, generate on-model um, characters. The pencils in the, this issue and the next three, uh, they're amazing. I have to admit, they... They look like they have, uh, look like they came from uh, Japan, like somebody from Japan drew this, so I gotta give uh, props to that. Also love that little uh, backstory of Light, showing that he was not always the uh, peace-loving guy. He made weapons of war, but of course, uh, we all have to do dirty things every now and then just to make money. Making weapons, easy money. But then, of course, he used that money for something peaceful. So, um, overall, I'm going to give this issue um, a 9.5 out of 10. And I'm looking forward to uh, reviewing uh, the rest of the Mega Man comic series. Because, um, well, I've read, read every one of them to date. And um, it's going to be an interesting ride. So, um, thank you for joining me. And um, I'll see you next time.